Check, Please, the D&D podcast. Previously, after learning the shocking truth of the nature of Marcus, the group decided that the best course of action was to drink their problems away. They then continued their journey and arrived by flying caravan to the city of Whalercog. Lavette had a heart-to-heart with her parents and now must confront the sins of her past. So last time, you guys made it to the gnome capital of Whalercog. You're at the Zanirus Bodwin estate, and you just mm-hmm. had a conversation with Lavette's mother. You guys well, were think... ushered into the house, yeah. and you spent the night there. It is currently the morning of the 22nd of November. And Vera Vera got me, right? Mm-hmm. Yep, in right the morning. Uh, brought, you... brought me to the estate. So it is currently the 22nd of November. It is early morning. What would you guys like to do? I figure that Lavette has not slept a wink. There's a lot of stuff for her to have thought about, but even still, I'm kind of a little late to get up. Cannot believe that this is all actually happening, good and bad. So, one thing I neglected to mention that I should have mentioned is that uh, your father, Seamus, is also there, and he uh, introduces himself to the group. There's really no reason why he wouldn't have been there last time, so that was my bad. Okay. I thought Describe what your father looks like. He does have the same color hair as Lavette, definitely where she gets it from. And is a fellow gnome. He's on the scrawnier side, but not so much as she is. He's got a pair of round glasses and a, a tight beard, and seems kind of chipper and well mannered. Yep. Okay. He is uh, he is neatly dressed and looks well uh, groomed, well taken care of. The two of Lavette's parents there, uh, Seamus and Lilith, they are good hosts. Giving you guys access to a reasonable bedroom, and uh, in the morning they have a meal ready for you. And right, so, so, instead of Vera having the meal, she went and got me? Uh, yes. Okay, so we're heading back to the state currently, while breakfast is happening. Probably get up shortly before that, before they get there, uh, and head down, but I don't know, I don't know what to do. Let's just in shock. <laughs> Uh, especially like the sight of coming down and seeing her parents there and having breakfast made for her is just like, what the fuck is going on? Is this real? You see the um, your parents there. They're interested in talking to you about your adventures, uh, your mm-hmm. travel, and they're also sharing their stories as well, how they, they traveled the length and breadth of the continent. You know, Seamus trying to track down uh, Lilith and your grandfather and um, how they eventually found each other there just at the just outside of Hartenshin. The lake shore. So, I have a question. In relation to what you said last night, you said that it was not. It was only a few months before you knew that it was a lost cause with Confasil. Is that right? Uh, Lilith explains that she had her doubts that he would recover uh, relatively early on in their grand tour, but she still wanted him to have one last chance to see the realm. You, I see. I understand. I suppose. So one thing you notice, Levette, is that the uh, the breakfast they've prepared, while nice, mm-hmm. is not quite up to the standard you remember from your childhood. Well, I'm not going to say anything about it. I, just, I mean, like, it's it's extremely good just in the, how nice it is to have this experience for mm-hmm. her. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I guess I'll just <laughs> eat breakfast kind of quietly, just okay. taking it all in. All right. Uh, where's the rest okay. of the party currently? Marcus is still sitting on a chair. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Popped up from the <laughs> evening before. He, he's still in shock from learning what he is, let's be honest. Yeah, yeah. I'm, um, I'm, I'm coming around. I'm coming yeah, around. He has some scuffs on his face. Are you going to have breakfast, Marcus? Of course I'm going to. Can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, we can yeah, hear you. Yes. I can hear okay. you. Soul's not okay, there. Yeah. I'm saying uh, as a player, are you okay, going to have I'm, breakfast? <laughs> um, You know what? I want some breakfast. I, I want some brekkies. Okay. And where's where's Vera? And Vera and uh, Sol are... So are on their way. On We're their walking way. towards the estate okay. currently. We're okay. right outside, I guess. All right. So uh, is there anything else that you guys wanted to do before the party reunites? Well, I hadn't expected that we were going to reunite very first thing, so I hadn't thought of anything. Okay. Yeah, I guess I'm just telling them about stuff. I'm still kind of avoiding the, the topic of Soul, but not maliciously or aggressively, just like every time. It's like... I, st- I give the bare amount of information necessary to tell whatever story I'm telling. So, uh... So... Go ahead. We're at the door to the state. So I was just kind of looking around at the architecture, because that's just a thing that seems to fascinate them normally. And they, they look over at Vera and they're like, a little upscale for your taste, isn't it? Definitely. Yeah, how'd you do sleeping here last night? Did you ruin one of their beds? The, the floor was fine. 
You slept on the floor? I mean, beds don't make it that much more comfortable. I've been using the wrong voice. <laughs> Whoops! Because <laughs> oh, I, okay. I have to be here. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Because currently, I have a male body. <laughs> Apologies. So, you've been sleeping on the floor. You slept on a bed when we were at the uh, Elegant Olive. Yeah, one time. It wasn't It wasn't that great. You just really hate beds, don't you? Yes. I respect that. And I'll open the door. Okay. So the, the door uh, show opens. Show my hand. Like... The door opens, and Levette, you are able to see the other two members of your group arrive. Oh, how's that? How's that? You met most of uh, my companions last night, but um, this is Sol. They are also uh, someone that Trappy is. And Sol if... does a, a flourished bow that they would normally see grow do. <laughs> If it is all right, is um, if we could excuse ourselves a moment, I would actually like to speak with them briefly. So, like, points at themselves and then at Vera, like, back and forth, like, confused which person you're talking Point about. Or, like, <laughs> oh. not at Sol. Sol nods back and then just kind of, like, shuffles a bit, trying to figure out where you want to talk to them. Oh, I feel I really go to my room. So I'll lead them up to the room. And I'm kind of, like, visibly more anxious as we get closer and just like pacing a lot and breathing heavily so you're gonna show me a dead body in your room or something you you doing okay Sully I just have some questions for you and uh, some things I want to say really quickly and then after that if you have anything you need to say in response I will listen uh, quietly alright I guess okay. okay Sully um, wait, I need to stop saying that. Uh, Sol just looks very confused. Okay. I'm sorry if these questions feel pointed or strange, uh, but if you could just give the most simple and direct answer that you... Alright. Okay. Sorry. Um, do you hate me? No, I don't think so. Are you mad with me? Hmm. No, no, I'm not mad with you. Are we friends? I honestly don't know, Levette. Ears droop. It sits down her bed. Okay. Look, I want to be friends, but it seems that everything I do either upsets you or. Hey, I'm sorry, but. I, let me say what I need to say, and I really, and I really, it may change how you feel. I don't know, because I really, I just wanted to apologize. I have, I, I want to apologize for my behavior with you. I've really been a jerk. I know I say sorry a lot, but this is a self thing. I, I've been petty. I've been envious. I've been spiteful and possessive, and I, even though it all came from a place of caring, I was completely blind to how my actions were hurting me. I was just terrified of doing something to lose you, and I didn't realize that the things I was doing to keep you close were actually the things that were pushing you away. Soul's just kind of nodding along. They look like they're they're doing like very direct eye contact listening to everything you're saying. They're just letting oh. you say what you need to. Well, that's trying to make eye contact, but not they're like struggling every time they make eye contact. She reflexively looks away. Soul's still looking at you. I, so I'm sorry for obsessing over you, and I doesn't mean to accuse you of anything. I'm just... I was dealing with feelings I don't know how to deal with, but it's no excuse. You haven't done anything wrong by me. I hope we so can. So walks friends. over and hugs Levette. Kind of like freeze up for a second and then hug back real tight. Friends? Please. Soul kind of nods and then like pats the back of Levette's head. It's so small compared to his gi- does, their, their giant hands have, now. She does have a head. I, I, I have yaoi <laughs> hands now. <laughs> They're so large. My feelings, I still, I still have to deal with them, and it's going to be tricky sometimes. And I apologize if I do anything 
mistake in, in the future, please let me know if I say anything wrong or do anything wrong, but I don't want to ruin our friendship. Soul nods and kind of pulls away from the hug. All right, oh. and you're okay with me being blunt and honest I, and everything? I don't see any other option, I suppose. I mean, it's it's going to be difficult, but I'm, I'm very so sure. Also, um, I would like at some point, I don't... So, was your fiancé just in the Mary Valley? Just hanging out there? What did, is he able to meet you places? Because if we could... Oh, if I could he has teleportation remote, spells. He's very um, handy. If uh, I could meet him uh, not intoxicated or with alien dance, I would, that might make a better impression. Oh, do you want to meet him today? I don't know what today has in store for me, so there's a lot going on in my head right now. No, that that's okay. I uh, need to take a shower before I see him next, anyways. Also, I don't, I don't know how much of uh, the last night we spent together. You remember because we were drinking quite a lot. Um, you asked me a couple of things that caught me off guard, but I have had time to think. You asked me why I like you, and it's the things I said were true, but it was kind of a bad answer. It really, it's the truth is you're everything I want to be, and everything I'm not. And you, you're naturally smart, you're charming, you're attractive to so many people without even wanting to be. And everyone just wants to be near you. It seems like destiny itself has a fate for you. Soul looks really sad at the word destiny. I um, love it. Destiny? No, I don't need that. You choose your own, but it does seem like the world has a way of making you important. Maybe you have a way of making yourself important. I don't know. Soul like looks far more like not exactly depressed, just melancholy. They look like they want to tell you something, but they can't. Do you want to tell me something? <laughs> yeah. It's right. better for everyone that I don't. Maybe eventually, but I don't even know if that day will ever come. But nonetheless, we'll work on being better friends, okay? Okay. And I'll sort this off my conscience. Don't take this on way, but I have some money for you because I have not paid you yet for your employment. So, like... <laughs> <laughs> Looks so deadpan now. Keep it. But I, it will, are you sure? It's really been bothering me. Money will never be an issue for me. It's not something I have ever really desired or wanted. I Give it to the... someone who's more important, like people who need it, like Ferris so Church or something. That's, I think, actually what I was going to do. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I well, guess. I'm I'm gonna give it to Ferris Church if if. You give it to me, so. Vera's home for orphaned bees. I think she would like it more if you gave it to her. Not the bees. If I gave it to her. Or you could be beast friends. (laughs) What the fuck? (laughs) Beast friends. (laughs) I feel like that needs Uh, damage. What? This is soul in character making a bad joke. Okay. Is, does it, is there an excuse? They're a bard! <laughs> they don't even like me. They seem really irritated the moment they got here. Well, you, you, you did call her religion a cult, remember? I also apologized for it, and I asked to learn more about it, and she just didn't want to tell me. Why don't you try one more time? People change their minds. I mean, Vera hated the guts out of me when I first met her. Yeah, I don't see... I really don't get what's... The, Change the land to the but I'm glad for you. I don't think she, don't think she likes some things about my life right now, and I'm not really sure if confronting her is a good idea. So, well, I, if you really don't want to, I will. I, I guess I can. I suppose I can try to try, and if she turns me down, I'll give it to you. Sounds good to me. Mm, Soul kind of like turns to like see if <laughs> we're leaving the room. Well, then I was going to leave at her. She's like, oh, oh go, go ahead. I, I, just be here. But she looks way more relaxed, and she does have a really, like, not a huge, goofy grin, but she's smiling now. Okay. 
Saul leaves the room. <laughs> I leave the room. Right. All right. So you head back to the main area where the rest of the group is sharing a breakfast meal. Mm-hmm. And, yes, uh, I do eventually. Seamus has some, some stuff to say. He says, Lovett, you've just gotten back into town and, well... I'm not sure if you heard the news or not, but well, it what isn't news? it. It isn't good. It's not. Good. Well, is it the Omalays. He he kind of gives you that knowing look. Yeah, it is. What did they screw up? What happened? Well, it's not that they screwed something up. It's that they actually might have pulled something off. They're they have some sort of new automaton. I'm not sure if they somehow got a hold of the old plans for Archie. I don't know. But they've made some sort of new automaton, and it's it's more advanced than anything they've ever made before. I am checking my coat to make sure that I still have that sphere. <laughs> yeah, you still have Archie with you. Of course. I thought they might steal it from me. <laughs> I was wondering <laughs> if that would happen. So, of course, uh, Cecilia, bless her heart, decided it'd be best to taunt me in private and show me what this thing could do, just as sort of a, a way to rub my nose in it, I suppose. It's uh, due to be unveiled to the public later today. The sure it stick, I suppose? It's an, enough of the basic design that it makes me question that maybe this is some sort of variant or modification on the original design. Well, I don't understand how everyone was so confused getting this one to work. It's you just the combination is play poker. It's never worked for anyone else. So, so Seamus continues on and says that he's he's not sure what's going to happen, but once this thing gets revealed to the public, he's certain that the Amoris family is going to get a major contract from the city and from the government, and they're just going to mass-produce these things, and it's, it's going to make the Amoris family the number one automaton producer of all known kind. And he doesn't know how they did it. Well, uh, they, must have they must have, and the only thing that he can think of to fix this is for you to take Archie to this uh, public debut and try to discredit them as thieves. I don't know if that's a good idea. And these of you heard about uh, Moira. Is that correct? He, say what? Uh, that neither of them heard about what happened with Moira. Yeah, he, sh- he shakes his head now that he hasn't heard anything. I see. I... I... I have something I should explain, but I, I was actually have not explained this to my, my friends either. Um, so I, this is all the time when we all gathered, maybe it's all the time. I don't know, this is my head churning. I have had some worrying thoughts, and I don't know, it doesn't make any sense. How could they do this? Sorry, I, I know I, this is very scattered. I have a lot going on, but I need to tell you about uh, what happened before you left, before anything else, Major. Is the rest of the party gathered here? Is everyone here? I'm yeah. here. Yeah, everybody's yeah. there. Yeah. Is like, Karis and everyone there? Oh, Although I guess I already told Karis. Listening. Yeah, okay. Karis already heard the story, but um, uh, Karis is not there currently. Oh, that makes it a little, a little more sad, but she has already told us the story. Um, do you, do you, Ezel, you know that uh, he was expelled? Uh, they shake their heads no. Sorry. I said, but they only recently got back to... Uh, to a whaler cog, and they hadn't heard anything. Well, I suppose it's probably good that they see you and told you first. I'm sorry. I, I know you both were counting on me. I know you were puzzled that you had put so much in to making sure that I succeeded. I don't know, I'm not ready to talk about this, but I'm going to have to face it soon. So, the two of you remember Moira, yes? They both nod. She's not very well anymore. I mean, more so than before. I know that. She always had a condition. She did, and I made it worse. And that's why I'm done with school. What do you mean you made it worse? I was tired of seeing her not be able to make it to class without being taken to the infirmary. So I, I for my thesis, I, I built a device, or I tried to build a device that is impossible that would sustain her uh, by taking things out of the life of the environment, the little insignificant things and out of insects and rocks and grass and sustaining her. But um, I did not do that. Seamus kind of like scratches his chin and like pulls pulls his small beard a little bit. Do you do you have the schematics? Well, 
Um, they are at least a third of my journal, so I think so. But I, I, I should get rid of them, really. I, I only have them because I'm a coward. They don't work. I, it made things worse. I didn't mean to, but it, it did the opposite. It took everything away from her. And the bot couldn't really see this as being different from killing another student, so uh, it was only Uncle Aiden that got me out of prison. I, they had to expel me. I see. I'm really sorry. Well, I suppose we could always sell the estate and go on the road. The, the two of you is me? But what about the rest of the family? They were counting on me to bring Grandfather back. Grandfather isn't coming back. I know, you know that. We have, to, we have to do something. We have to. I it's have over. To fix this. They've. The Morris is. It seems like they've won. You should not have left. I'm sorry. No, I won't leave out of that. I won't. I won't take the smug bullshit. But I think I should see Moira first. If they will let me. I don't know that they will. They both nod. Sort of silently. I kind of look around to gauge how everyone else is reading this. If people are following along and, you know, just what people are seeming to feel. Saul looks concerned. Please. I mean, at least you tried to help. You shouldn't, you shouldn't feel bad about that. I shouldn't have played outside of my means. I know this was just the thing that she would have to leave us and I tried to... Okay, God. Seamus like looks sort of concerned as he's he has like a faraway look on his face and he's like this doesn't add up. You've always been so gifted at this. I don't I couldn't imagine that you would make a device that functioned the opposite of its intended purpose. I don't know. I I thought my travel suit I was naively thinking that my travels might reveal some sort of hidden talent, but uh, they seem to only Accentuate my ineptitude. I'm so sorry, Father, I lost your hand. <laughs> <laughs> and the boat, uh, I lost it. I bought another one, I make it. Yeah, so Seamus is confused as to how such a thing could have happened in the first place, and Lilith just sort of hugs you to try to help you feel better. Oh, hug her back. Do you think that someone could have messed with your engineering? Well, uh, some of my relatives suspect all in the Omoris family, they are uh, sort of rivals to us. Levette, what if those people, I don't know, messed with your machine? Can they do something like that? I mean, I was pretty obsessive about it, but I don't know. That's what people suspect, but I... I, don't I mean, it seems like even your parents think that, like, you wouldn't have made something bad. What if someone tampered with it? To so, frame you? In the time you know me, the things you have seen me do and say, do you think I could have split that up? I mean, you made that really awesome war defending machine for the farmers in Heart and Shen. Okay, you call the- that simple, I call that fantastic. That wasn't a mess up, and that was just in what? You made that in three days when that needed to be done in, like, a week? And your schematics have always proven useful. In what way could you have messed this thing up? I just... It had to be me. Soul raises their eyebrows and kind of leans forward. I I, I could have done something. I could have, if I just... What if someone else did something? It's Think of the bad. possibility. I don't want to. Why not? Because what could I have done about that? You could fix it now? Couldn't you look we in your notes and see? We could... Well, I, I mean, we researched... I, I showed my notes to the board, but they were pretty conclusive. But earlier on, my student was all but dead. And that was all the evidence they needed, so they didn't really investigate it. Uh, <laughs> sounds like terrible researchers to me. You don't investigate a murder? They look slow to know. They, they tell me that my calculations must have been inaccurate and that I was that it was 
player to the curriculum. They, they were not being taught anything like this. I'd never really liked to do what we were being taught about. I just kind of wanted to make my own things. I wanted to make things that made people feel better. So kind of shrugs and like puts their hands up. Look, all I'm saying is this. These people don't sound like they're any good and it's just from an outsider looking in. That's all. Because I be. So, with the possibility of sabotage on the table, Seamus again asks if you have your schematics for the device. Um, well, I have my notes. Um, so it's all taken over a lot of months, and so it's schematics go through a lot of traps, but I can, I can give you that. Um, well, actually, let me copy some down. Okay. So you, you get some pieces of paper yeah, out. Go and... Yeah. I'll start to, and I don't know. I, there's probably way too many notes to copy it down, but Lilette doesn't want to give people her obsession log because it's just her personal journal. Right. And, like, there's a lot of personal stuff in there, especially sure. towards the beginning and especially really recently. Yeah. Uh, and most people she's fine with because it's written in gnomish or elvish, depending on the context. But her parents can both read both, so it's like, shit. Uh, but she'll copy down the important parts. The final draft, I guess. And hand it over. Okay. So, Seamus is going to take a look at it, and he's going to, like, talk it over with you. So he makes sure he understands what every component is meant to do. Okay. Probably it takes you both about an hour as oh. he, like, kind of meticulously goes over the device's function and material and construction. I know who we should show this to. Um, we should get Callis on this. Um, I think this problem was with my, uh, I came fixing and not so much with the mechanics, but I don't know where she went. It's possible I haven't seen her today. Uh, did we offer her own? Uh, Lilith nods. Okay, I'll she go must have, see, check she the must guest have, rooms. She must have either not, in, not gotten up today yet, or perhaps she woke up early and departed. You go to the guest rooms and you find them all empty. Uh-oh. <clears throat> where's Kelly's? Marcus, do you know? Well, no, you wouldn't know. But then, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. I just got here this morning. Did I see anything when I uh, got up? No. Well, I could go ask people around the place if you want. So she would stick out quite badly. Yeah. Um, I, could you please? We, of course. We can keep going back all of these notes, I guess. Uh, Soul heads out to go find Karis. Okay. Everyone's going to search. Please make a perception check to gather info. Or sorry, di- diplomacy, not perception. I got a twenty-eight for diplomacy. Okay. Very good. Uh, a twenty-six for perception. If there's any perception involved, then you guys are a pretty good tag team. I, I was going to uh, just look as a bee in the sky. Okay. So you start. Bear to- doesn't talk to people. You start to That's comb the correct. city and search for Karis. Uh, meanwhile, um, mm-hmm. while you guys go out and search, Seamus is going to continue talking to Levet. Mm-hmm. Just judging by the the, the layout and the devices style and function he keeps asking you if like if you're sure these calculations are correct and you're sure you did it like this and you're sure you 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 attach this just like it's shown in this picture kind of a thing he's, he's like going over every detail mm-hmm. with you mm-hmm. and you're i'm assuming oh. you're you're affirming everything is being accurate i figure probably i don't assume it's accurate but i run it through it and i explain how it's supposed to work and as i run through it, it's like yeah 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 that's right mm-hmm Probably within the next 30 minutes, he sets the schematics down and pushes them back toward you. And he's like, you didn't do anything wrong. What? He says, the the device checks out. Everything you've explained, if you've done it the way you say you've done it, should have worked. But... Well, maybe those two have more to answer for than I thought. I think it's... Maybe a good idea if I read on the plate after all. He gives you a smile, claps you on the shoulder, says, There's my girl. So what do we have in mind? Well, I figure that we show up, parade March Archibald around there, show them that their design is cribbed from ours, and that we have a copyright on the technology, sync all their business contracts overnight, and uh, start up our own. So, I see two complications. Um, one, if an uh, investor see Archibald and they are uh, impressed, I'll be sure we can build more. I have uh, outfitted him with some upgrades, but I have not tried building another one. I'm confident we can... Know what makes him go. I'm confident we can reverse engineer enough 
to be able to replicate at least a lesser version. It's, it's, well, there's someone else who should be in on this conversation. I'm going to go ahead and take out Archibald, set it on the floor, and wait the one minute. All right. Archibald unfurls after one minute. Like, Can he look... hear when he's in sphere form? No. Okay. He's asleep. Then I'll explain that to him. All right. He listens and kind of nods along. Are you okay with Filzies? He thinks for a moment. He kind of like turns his head to the side and then he extends out a long finger and sort of like touches you above the heart. Would you like more siblings, I guess? I see what it is. This doesn't seem like a conversation I was expecting to have with anyone. But... He, uh, he thinks and clicks and whirs for a moment. He nods his head. So... I am very confident that if we could get my friends to help us, then we could easily put on a show that would knock the two of them out of the water. But I am worried that this is what they are expecting us to do, that they are trying to lure Archibald out. How did they find out that he brought? It was when I tried to uh, sell him off before I knew what he was. If there wasn't a selling price, no one would buy it. How did they know it was important? They, no one knew that he even existed on Alia. Oh, you know how the Amoris no. work. They've got spies everywhere. One of them must have gotten word back that the last scion of our family decided to go traveling with uh, some advanced automaton. The only steal they have heard about that. I thought when I departed that everyone would take it as lighting me off, that it would... Uh, effectively like me out of the equation in their minds and they wouldn't have, they wouldn't have to worry about it but given that the meal been wrong I might be glad to do if you are safe and that grandpa is safe and we might want to make sure he stays safe well the best way we can figure to do that is to sink the Omoris family if we can discredit them, them and show the rest of the city that they're nothing but low no good thieves then no one would dare do business with them so not just thieves though Tequilas. He nods. True. If we can find actual evidence of their their crimes against Moira, then uh, at least those twins would be put to jail. Well, two of you uh, have not seen Moira. I would not have heard about her. I should also make sure that she's still technically alive. Or not. Oh, and we should not any quite can this as well. Alright. Alright. Well, yeah. So, you uh, you continue, or you uh, you wrap that conversation up, and the folks on the street, you search around for a little bit, talk to people, and you eventually are able to find some leads that a tall human, white hair, was seen walking around looking at things, and you eventually find yourselves in the coal ward at an assembly yard in the coal ward. And there you find Karis is sort of just standing by the side of an assembly yard watching clockwork automatons assemble more clockwork automatons. She's got, like, ash and dirt and dust, like, blown up across her clothes and face. Sol's gonna uh, approach her. Hey, Karis. Oh, hello. Hello. How did... Oh, how long have I been gone? I don't know. I just got there this morning. So maybe when I got there... Which, honestly, it's been a couple hours. Um, you doing okay, bud? Sorry, I, I must have lost track of time. These, um, this place is pretty strange. Yeah. Have you seen what they're able to do here? She points to, to uh, the, the automatons. They're, they're not even, they're not even animated with negative energy. Like, there's no souls or anything in them. Soul walks over to Karis to stand by her. They're more akin to golems, but yet they're being assembled so cheaply here. Cheaply? Well, I mean, uh, cheaply in the sense that no one's grinding up 10,000 gold pieces worth of diamond dust. <laughs> yeah. They're just putting them together and throwing some simple wards and binding spells on them, and the next thing you know, they're walking around. You could, Is you could that to- good? You could put together a significant force like this with very little effort. I mean, you wouldn't have the same degree of control over them that you would from, like, say, undead, but mm-hmm. still, they're an interesting interesting way to do things. Oh, speaking of, how's, how's, your, um, how's your eye doing? I was wondering if I could actually get a refresher, and Sol kind of lifts up their eye patch. She kind of, like, winces a little mm-hmm. bit as she sees what it looks like. Sorry. 
She casts a spell on your eye. There, that should keep you going for a few more days. Thank you. Sol puts the eye patch back down. It's handy for when it looks like that. <laughs> I kind of chuckle. Yeah, um, I've, I've been thinking about it, and I, I can tell that you're not really happy with it. Um, if you want me to get rid of it, I, I wouldn't be offended. I think I'm good for right now. Maybe eventually, but it's still fairly useful, and you put a lot of effort into it, which I can't help but appreciate. If the time comes where I can't handle it anymore, it is in no means offense to you. But for now, it's fine. Okay, I, we we should get back. Yeah, you you sure you're okay though, Karis? Is yeah, there... no, this place is just kind of interesting looking, you know. Yeah, of course. And uh, Soul kind of does a really quick shoulder scruffle, like they do from time to time with her. Mm-hmm. Shall we get back to the state then? Uh, Lovett's been asking about you. She looks embarrassed. All right, so the rest of the party returns to the Zenris Bodwin estate. And I'll run to Greek Harris and just barely stop to, like, I want to run up and hug her, and then I'm like, wait, no, I remember just before I catch up, get to her. She uh, she looks happy that you attempted, but she's uh, she's grateful you didn't touch her. Huh, hello. Oh. I'm I'm sorry. I kind of wandered off. I didn't mean to upset it's, anyone. I saw it say talk you or something. Faith, who, you you guys killed Warren, remember? No, someone different. Uh, what do you mean? Uh, do you remember my friend that I told you about? I don't even know how I remember that. That's like the only thing I remember from that night. And something about uh, a tall guy. Sorry, um, I didn't kill her. I didn't, I didn't kill Moira. Well, you said you didn't kill her, but it was sort of like a comatose thing, right? But we went over the notes and we could double check. I would, if you could double check the arcane side of this, make sure that the numbers check out. Um, Sh- sure. She walks over to your notes and sits down. Does she read Gnomish? Karis doesn't speak or read Gnomish. I don't think so. I figured she probably just knew Village because she lived in a cave. So I'll uh, I'll turn the page over and write it down in Village. Yeah, she speaks Shade Speak, if that helps. <laughs> nope. <laughs> All right, so you guys can translate the notes for, for Karis. She'll go over and read them, and within 30 minutes, she's able to determine that uh, the arcane side of things seems to check out to a reasonable degree. She doesn't see why it wouldn't have worked based on the other parts in play. This would not have taken her essence away? No, quite the opposite. The only way it could have done that, and she starts talking about how, like, certain polarities and fields would have to be reversed, and the only way they could have done that is by changing around some of the mechanical parts. Because the, um, the spells would have been the same either way, it's just that it would have changed the flow of the magic through the device. It and instead of, instead of acting as a siphon pulling the magic in, it would have acted oppositely and siphoned the magic out, leaving basically a husk. Yeah. Do you know what happened to the device? Um, well, she has to wear it. It was not safe to take off. It just had to stay there. Unless our DM did not think that was the case. What? Um... So I was imagining that it was like it's like an iron lung, and it's basically attached to her, and oh, like see. they didn't understand how it worked well enough to safely remove it. Gotcha. And without it, she would have died. Well, I mean, it's spec. Like they're like didn't really get how it worked. Okay. Uh, gotcha. So they just were like, we don't know to take it off. Okay. So what should we should do? We... Pay a visit to your friend, or should we pay a visit to your friends? Moila. Moila comes close. Don't care about the episode two if we can fix this. If we can't fix it, well then we have to just like some things instead. So let's hope it does not come to that. All right. So in that case, you guys head over to the O'Brien estate. So I'm really hesitant to knock though. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it definitely feels fills you with a bit of a sense of dread here. The last time you were here, you felt fully like a murderer. Yes. How do you feel now? Well, the people in the house still think I am one. I can't believe they will let me see her if I left. I don't know if they let me see her today. Karis looks at you. Well, I don't think you're a murderer. Let's prove them wrong. Well, I sense them like absolutely am a murderer, but we've, we've killed a lot of people. I mean, not, not like murder-murder. I don't think killing Warren counts as murder. 
Well, the orc since they were alive, and now they're not. I mean, I mean so that was crazy. self-defense, really. Oh well, yes, okay. So, I do feel a little bit. I mean, do you, do you, you really think around. that you've committed murder? I don't know. It's felt that way for years. It has been. What? Have I been traveling over seven murders? years now? It's a real gray area. Yes, well, I was worried that you were. I was really worried that I would actually. So you would all end up the same way. So, I guess I don't feel like I am anymore because I'm not scared of that anymore. I feel like I actually have friends once. Well, let's go clear your name then. What are we waiting for? Well, that puffs out her chest and, like, you know, kind of stands up straight and goes to knock on the door, but she still just freezes with her hand up in the air. Karis knocks on the door for you. A moment later, a servant answers the door, asks who you are and why you're here. I'm, uh... Here to see Moira O'Brien. I was told I might be able to help her. The servant kind of like looks, kind of gets a grave look on their face when you say that. No one's come to see Moira in years. Is she alive? If you can call it living. Uh, yes, I, okay. Okay, okay. Well, well, I might be able to help. I can't promise anything, but I. I won't make it else. Alright, so the, the servant asks you to wait here and goes off to talk to uh, one of the one of the members of the household. Okay, she's alive. She's alive. <sighs> a moment later, you hear, like, fast footsteps, and you see an elderly gnomish woman who you recognize as Moira's mother. She has a truly hateful look on her face. <laughs> I just cannot make eye contact. She starts, like, from the doorframe, looking down at you. Uh, she's kind of, like, just berating you for having the gall to show your face here after what you did to her daughter. What, what gives you the right to come back here after all these years and tear open these old wounds again? I understand how you feel. I do, and I... She, she interrupts you and says, you have no idea what it's like to wake up every day and to see the... the, the the light of your life just reduced to a husk and you can't do anything about it and the only person who's responsible for it just decided to flee and not even get any real justice you have no idea I what it's like you're right. I don't know what it's like because I did not run away I... hey lady she, she looks up at you well actually it's probably closer to eye level because she's at the stoop of the door and you're just uh, an elf soul is just like literally like leaning over his lady pretty much then. What, you brought thugs? No, no. They are here to help us. So, here. Help me out. Look, just listen to her, okay? These people are here to make sure that I can, I can maybe make her better. And if I If I you don't think succeed, for one second that I would let you anywhere near my daughter again, you're out of your mind. And if that's all you're here for... To come and try to finish the job, then uh, she is so flustered she can't even speak, and she slams the door. So that hits me then, well, huh? Because I was out. like yeah. <laughs> hovering over her pretty much. Yeah, the door kind of smacks you a little bit. She's pretty strong for a no. Oh, you okay? Saul's rubbing their face. I um, I've never had a sh- uh, door shut on me. What a bitch! No, she's like, I mean. She's not if right, it's though. Up, well, no, but I, I understand. Let's I just go beat up that other family so long. and prove them wrong. I don't want to hurt more people. I just want to see Moira again. Well, we can't see her until we prove your innocence. So Kara shrugs and says, Well, if we can't see your friend, then maybe if we can secure some sort of evidence against these Omorises, then... We could maybe clear your name, and then she'd have to let you see Moira. What kind yeah. of evidence could we find? This was years ago. Yes, not exactly a pristine crime scene. She kind of like has a, a, a cruel smile, and she says, "I have ways of making people talk." Soul <laughs> looks over with a kind of a drained expression, and they kind of like instinctively rub the like side of their temple where they're. She's she's like rubbing uh, one of her hands with the other hand. Uh, Car- Karis? Yeah, what's up? What are, what are you thinking? 
Oh. Well, that doesn't really smile at that, but her eyes light up, kind of like, all right, yeah, I'm into it. Well, I mean, there's lots of different magical solutions, um, different ways that we can make truth-telling spells. You know, then there's the old-fashioned way. I'm sorry, these are people that framed someone and subverted the laws for their own benefit. Soul raises their hands and just shakes their head. Do, do what you need to. I'm not saying we kill them. I mean... I'm not saying we don't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never going to get caught, so I could. Right, that's so. But remember, killing them doesn't solve the problem. We have to get a confession. Or at least some concrete evidence that you could present to some authorities here and discredit their family or get them locked up, what, whatever they do in this weird place. Is there anyone I could submit my schematics to, like an authority that could verify that they would work? Uh, Sounds to me like you need like a guild. Yeah, like a guild or like a judge. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the, the place you would actually do that would be the, the college so the, the, the body that has expelled you and refused to look at your schematics is the one that would that should have cleared them. And all of that happened kind of in a, a bit of a whirlwind. Yeah. Thinking back on it now, it happened a little too fast. Let's go kill Moriarty! <laughs> I'll, I'll turn back into Vera, because I've been a bee this whole time. Mm -hmm. so, You've been a bee? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there might you be a... bee the whole time? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Those buzz bitches. I mean, there might be other ways to get into the room. Don't we could always go in uh, when she's not here. here. Has he had any that is a matter. She's going to be here all the time. What? But why would she be here all the time? At her home? Oh, I thought it was at the school. No, this is yeah. at her home. Oh. Also, if the person they think tried to kill her is, is seen sneaking into the house. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure that. that'll look great. Well, it'll be fine if uh, she fixes it. No, I yeah, I don't know as if I can. I was going to offer that if I could not fix it, I would turn myself in. But I didn't get the chance to say so. so. Then let's prove her wrong. Let's prove everyone wrong. Let's kick some no like, asses. Are you? Will you help me do that? Will you help me prove everyone wrong? I mean... I mean... <laughs> hell yeah. I go to hug both Sol and Karis, and then I'm like, wait, right? And then just hug Sol. <laughs> Karis Again, looks semi-embarrassed and semi-jealous. Uh, Sol pats Lovett's head and then looks kind of sadly at Karis. It's, it's fine. Let's let's just go. Let's just go fuck some gnomes up. Deal. And Sol takes out their lyre and flicks it into its chakram position, and then like spins it around their finger, oh, and then like grabs it as it like goes like back a, to its lyre form, like a fidget spinner. All right. I, why would you say that? You ruined my cool moment. Yeah. Oh. That seems to be a trend for what things I say. Dude, I love the idea that Soul's magic weapon is a fish spinner. You're all assholes. <laughs> I... <laughs> listen, oh, listen. Yeah. Who's the one drawing the title cards? It's me. It doesn't matter. Kenny, it, it's funny that it's a fidget spinner, but at least it's not a sling staff. It's true. It's true. It could it's be true. worse. It could be a sling set. You could be attacking people with rocks. Dude, but a fidget spinner is just such a soul thing. It's so perfect. <laughs> like, I can just imagine them with, like, four bladed fidget spinners on their fingers. Like, who's, who wants to fight me now, bitches? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, the Omoris family is debuting their new automaton at the City Arena, which is on the east side of the Forge side of the Rich District. It is a large arena complex used for various sporting and competitive events. Oh no. Oh no. No, 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 no. I know where this is going. No. I should have turned up to excited. a giant snake. What? No, would have, they would have fucking not seen that one coming, bitches. What? <laughs> oh. Why is this confused? So... Oh my god, there's a lot behind what I just said. Um, 
We'll see how things go. I'm pretty sure Art Jewel is going to have to have a fist fight with a robot. And there was a pretty reasonable chance when we leveled up back at level six that I was going to turn him into a giant flying snake. <laughs> uh, Terrifying. That been Please continue. Really di- that would have been very, very different. So what you're saying is the DM is setting up a giant game of Rock'em Sock'em Robots because, it feels like. because the DM cares about his players and wants them to have a fun time. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it does sound pretty awesome, but I don't want to, I'm scared. I don't want to bet my robot. I don't want him to get... Because he fucking rolls so bad. I don't want him to <laughs> go out there and fight someone alone. He's going to be so scared. <laughs> Soul looks very interested in the competition. They seem to have like a bit of a sparkle in their eye currently. Okay, so yeah, how are we finding out about the competition? It was uh, news that Seamus told you guys about that the oh, uh, right. okay. the, the Amoris family so had uh, basically rented out or hired out or blocked out oh, the I city see. arena for the debut of their new most impressive and powerful automaton that is going to be available for purchase the next day. It's today. Yeah, he mentioned. Yeah, yeah did I not say that? Let's do it. this. I thought, that thought. I thought I said that. Oh god! I had a lot of baggage. I wanted to get out before I started beating the shit out of I think you have to get the baggage out after we beat shit up. Okay, let's do this. All right, I'm going to a little bit of plan. Okay, let's go to the arena then, I guess. Woo! Um, wait. Okay. Uh huh. Soul starts walking in a direction. They actually don't know where the arena is. Alright, this way. Sorry. <laughs> oh, right. oh, oh, sorry. Yeah, is, that, is that building also? Alright, the party, party heads east and goes to the large arena complex. I, while we're walking there, I want to strategize a plan. I like this uh, idea. With my party members. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I don't expect the Morrises to play fair. I mean... If what we're all suspicious of is true, then no, they, they play really dirtier than I expected. They are not uh, exactly the friendliest for people, but that is. But anyway, if they are not going to play fair, then I don't think we should either. And if you would all help me. Uh, Soul takes out their lyre and kind of waggles it and is just like, oh, just a little bit of courage ain't gonna be too bad. I hope it helps, Archie. It's better than nothing. I, I, I'm, I don't have a whole lot of ideas, I guess. I thought we were going to be putting on a different kind of show, but I forgot it is in the arena, and... Knowing those two, it is probably going to turn into something uh, very physical. So, perhaps uh, something more than showmanship is what we need. But what, 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 what? Dara? Yes? Could you... Uh... Or Kamal, or either of you spy on someone? Is it B? Would that be something that couple of you all admit? I can have Hamel spy on someone, but he'd have to come to me to tell me what's what, and I'd have to ask yes or no questions. Okay, that's uh, <laughs> not ideal, but it's, it's something. It's something. As you guys approach the arena, um, you can see there's a number of automatons that are sort of like just standing guard around the area and just kind of just mostly in in uh, in sort of a waiting or low power mode. And they look like this. Oh, damn. Oh, shit. oh they're cool. So you recognize... Oh, you I recognize, thought Archibald looked cool. Damn. You, you recognize the style. Uh, you recognize the build. That's actually... It's a it's an old Omoris design known as the Obot Mark VII. Man, my names are much cooler than theirs. Yeah, it's O apostrophe bot. Like Omoris. They're not very creative, the Omoris family. No. It's better than, uh, or it's more creative, I guess, than Prototype 1, but I don't know if it's, it sounds way less cool. Yeah. So this is the Obot Mark 7, and it's been in, it's been in design and development and production and, and service for now a long time. Um, it's generally re- regarded as clunky and unreliable, but also cheap. So. It yeah. sort of fits in the Omoris brand. And Skelly is hell, which I don't know how to say. Okay. Same things that look like this. Argue still looks kind of badass. So cool. Yeah. I, they, I e- even in like. I don't want to draw this. Even in, <laughs> like, even in low. Well, even in low power mode, they still kind of like jerk and jitter around in unnatural ways. They're haunted. I don't like them. Kill them. <laughs> 
I was going to comment. like, pointing at one. <laughs> but, like I said, there's a bunch of them. They're all over the place. Um, like, they, they are, they've been in production for a long time, and they're, they can be seen here and there throughout the city. There's a lot of different production houses and design mm-hmm. firms in the city, so you're going to see a lot of different builds and types. And this is one of the cheaper models that is semi-ubiquitous throughout the city. So whatever they're debuting today is something else. Mm-hmm. Right. It's good because these things are a piece of trash. Yeah. Souls and poking they one. They don't make any well, yeah. Probably you, should not do that. They can you be look, a little jumpy. <laughs> you look at them and you're like, these are under-engineered pieces of filth. Mm-hmm. And Soul hates it because they don't, they're not natural. Mm. What about Archie? Yeah. Yeah. They are natural. Gnomes are part of nature. Mm-hmm. I don't it checks like out. It. it checks out. Yeah, but are the automatons part of nature? Well, they're part of the... They, yeah, the gnomes built them as a part of their nature. <laughs> they naturally can uh, The same way that a dam that a beaver builds is natural. To be fair, the dam's made out of wood. Yeah, the dam's made out of wood, not metal. What's the... So... It's they gather a different mineral or different resource, not uh, mineral resource, but a different industrial pro- versus yeah, and natural. So yeah, as you guys are having this yeah, this argument in the street, uh, <laughs> okay, sure. you you hear um, uh, a loud commotion and um, you see a group of those those Obot Mark Sevens carrying a very large crate uh, toward the arena. In front of it, you see uh, a pair of finely dressed gnomes. Uh, you see these. Two gnomes. They appear to be twins. They're uh, probably average gnomish height, maybe a little shorter than average. Uh, They're wearing black clothes with uh, gold undergarments or gold uh, accents on their clothing. They each have blonde hair. Uh, The male has darker uh, hair toward the root, but the uh, the ends of the hair is sort of almost blonde, like bleached blonde almost. Uh, the sister's oh. hair is long and well kept. It looks like it's heavily styled with large curls on the sides of the head. Uh, very, very light blonde, almost a platinum blonde. Uh, she looks pretty good for a gnome, uh, you know. And by gnome standards, she'd be considered very beautiful. Uh, but she also wears a large amount of facial makeup. And uh, they walk. Do they have any sort of symbol? They walk on with, their clothing with a practiced smugness. That you can Ew. detect from a long way away. Can we kill away. them? Oh, yeah. Like, you can yeah. see the stick up their ass. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Soul instinctively starts to walk towards these people. So, the uh, these two gnomes are, are standing, or walking in front of the crate as they're kind of, like, musing to each other and laughing. Um, and then they stop and when they see you. A little bit. Hmm. I kind of have, like... I guess a crazed expression because I'm like trying to smile, but my eyes are like I'm gonna fucking murder you. Uh, Souls just um, uh, twirling their lyre. So the, I guess uh, actually once I come face to face with them, that's gonna die down because old habits die hard. No, they're they're, they're they're close enough to talk to you. Uh, oh, the, well then, yeah, the, I start becoming submissive. The female gnome rubs her hand down the arm of the male gnome and says, "Look, brother, it's the bastard. Can you believe it?" The, uh, sure. the male gnome says, I hardly can, sister. I had no idea the dirty blood would be back. Uh, How are you doing, old long boy. ears? Didn't think I'd see you here again. Soul, Soul has a weird look on their face and they lean over Marcus's ear. Can you eat their souls? Marcus is Marcus is visibly seething. He, okay, let's pause for a second. We know that <laughs> one is not, not the nice person he was. He knows that he's a nice person. However... With new knowledge, <laughs> with new knowledge, he feel he doesn't feel as benevolent as he once was. So you could take take over this person's soul and just end this right now. <laughs> it's tempting. I don't see um, it alone, for sure. Yeah, any of this is being set up so like, the what the fuck Mar- take our says, Marcus responds to positive energy. How does he respond to this kind of nonsense? In, I never said you responded to positive energy. That was an yeah, assumption. Was oh. You that just was, oh. respond to people being around. That was a total right. assumption on your guys' part. Oh, oh my. You're hungry. This is me speaking. I feel as though the character of the entity that is Marcus would feel more 
apt to eating a soul that they didn't like, that when stressed and angry. Now remember, I, I do feel that I need to remind you of something. <laughs> yeah. Consumers, You're gonna freak Karis the fuck out. Can, well, two things. One, if you did this, Karis would just leave and never come back. No, I um, understand this. And, and two, consuming a soul makes you gain all of its memories. Uh, well, most of them you at least. You become that person. And you kind of take on like, a lot of those yeah. traits. So, yeah, I don't want that. So, you know, just maybe consider that before you start eating someone. No, <laughs> I understand this. I don't want to do this. It's I feel as though the character would be consider? more... Would consider it more when they are more stressed or more angry. Just an idea. Soul's just pretty much trying to avoid curb stomping a bunch of gnomes because it seems very easy. <laughs> it almost seems rude. Eh, I'm never gonna come back here. <laughs> Man, seems there's a lot of mixed feelings going on with all that. Low level, uh, because there's a low level, lot of confidence coming from her friends being like this. <laughs> low level XP. So, uh, they're still waiting on your response, by the way. What they ask? They, oh, wait. They asked, uh, basically they were surprised to see you, they insulted you a bunch, and then uh, they asked if you've come here to uh, watch their final success over your pitiful family. Soul's like, um. looking at their shoe. Looks pretty good. <laughs> Could easily kick these kids. Pun? When you hide them, or you think I was uh, feel easy. But, why do you know about what happened to my life? I'm just going to ask. Who? Moira. She was your friend, too. Oh, right. The girl you killed. Yeah. Yeah, so they're basically going to say that they haven't really had any interactions with Moira since you pretty much killed her. Okay, when I heard that you stole my grandfather's design or copied it, uh, so I was going As to... if your grandfather's a has-been. That might be correct, but... Uh, his work still stands in that game first. And hmm. honestly, it's probably better. Huh. Well, we'll see about that. Hmm. Now, if you don't mind, the two of us have history to make. And they start walking okay. again. No, I kind of mind. So, um, we can talk about this here, or we can uh, make a big stupid show of this out there. I don't really care how we do this. But you know I'm right, so cut this shit out and we call it me. You're welcome to try, Tree Trunks. You're welcome to try. They keep walking, and the Mark 7s tromp behind them. Make perception yeah, checks, everybody. You got it. Yes. Man, my first die roll today. Woof. Okay, let's uh, see. 26 okay, for me. 26. Okay. All right, so the only person that sees this is Soul. so I would like to jump Soul into another channel real quick and relay some information. Okay. Yes. So as the two of them walk away... You get a strange, odd look at the two of them, and you get a weird sense from their body language and from the way they're kind of, like, touching each other that it doesn't seem entirely sibling. Ew, they're like the Ashfords. Gross. So that's what you think you see. Ugh. Enjoy. Soul <laughs> does not... Soul looks kind of grossed out. Uh, Marcus does... So are you sure nope. I can't kill them? Oh, whoa, whoa, don't just kill people. I don't need to use this. We don't I mean, I'm yeah, never going to okay. come here again. Can we <laughs> you want, <laughs> want, want to visit me? Wait, you, you plan on staying? Yeah, what What are you talking about, visiting? You're... Oh, I just mean eventually. I, I, I'm planning on coming home. Soul, Soul's facial color kind of drains for a second. I don't mean immediately. I just, this is... No, I... I understand. Oh. Um, soul kind of shuffles a bit. I take care of some things. Yeah, let's let's get going. Yeah. Okay. So you guys head into the arena. It is jam packed with gnomes of all different stratas of society. There are common workers all the way up to aristocrats here. As the news of this landmark innovation in automaton engineering is going to be unveiled, so there's you know high ups from the. The School of Engineering, there's high-ups from all the different manufacturing guilds. Uh, this thing is supposed to replace... Oh. Yes? No, just I didn't think about that. Oh, God. I'm going to fucking die. These yeah, people so the, want me. Yeah, there's a lot of important gnomes here. So you guys get to the arena, and once inside, you see that the uh, Mark 7s have dropped 
uh, the, that crate off in the center of the arena, and the uh, the twins are out there next to it, and they're addressing the audience, and they're talking about how this, you know, today is going to be a defining moment in the history of the Steam Isle. Today is the day that the Amoris clan becomes the preeminent constructor and designer of automatons. Uh, with this, the unveiling of the new and perfected Obot Mark 14. And they press a button, the cage that it great opens up, revealing the following creature. You see a automaton that stands about seven feet tall, and it has four arms. Each one sports a different instrument, uh, a drill, a large blade, a large hammer, and then some sort of projectile launching arm. You're not sure what it does. It looks like some sort of cannon. It has a strangely shaped head with a single eye in the middle, large pistons coming out of its back, and it's covered in what appear to be armored plates. It does not move with the same jittery harshness of the older Obot models. It seems to move in a more fluid, human-like motion that reminds you of Archibald's movements. While the basic frame looks a bit different, you can definitely see the architectural and design elements that are clearly cribbed from Archibald's design. Uh, they content, like the, the crowd like oohs and awes looking at this thing as the twins start it up and it smoothly walks around and practices like swinging its multiple arms uh, at various dummy targets that they've set up. I have a question. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've been actually wondering since we arrived. Is the cog language that Lavette speaks, is that a language that other, like, is that common here, or is that something that she figured out because only art? Does, do other clockwork things speak it, I guess, yes. really? Yes, cog, so, okay. cog is so used. Yeah, cog is used as a command language. Okay, but they really only can respond with, like, yes and no? Basically, yeah. There's not a whole lot of discussion that happens in the language. I have okay. a question. Yes? Can I understand it with tongues? Yes. <laughs> <gasps> finally talk to Archibald. Yeah, I'm, I'm so happy. I I'm but curious, also and I, I can't wait. Tell secrets. So they only say yes and no normally. Normally, normally they just respond to direct questions and give affirmative or negative answers. Uh, automatons don't usually have opinions. Yeah, they speak in That's binary sad. and they don't have opinions. Yeah, so they just kind of respond so wait, to like one zero one. If, but Archie seems to be a little different. Yes. Yes, he's much different. <sighs> It's very special. I, I like Archie <laughs> that much more. Yes, he's very special. That's good. We should like Archie because sometimes right. we forget he's here. <laughs> I don't. Well, he's not always out. He's just usually he's in my pocket. Picture. He's travel sized, just like right. Levette's fun sized. Anyways. Mm-hmm. So the uh, sure. the twins are are you know walking around the automaton and they're pointing out various design features and certain specifications and how it's, you know, so much percent better than the previous models and performs so many percent better than rival building uh, designs and how one of these models is worth so many of this other rival type. You know, they're, they're going on and on laying accolades upon their own designs. All right. The I'm crowd gonna... appears to be eating it up. So <laughs> is there a way for us to enter, like, the arena area or is that, like, Carted off. You guys are up in the stands around the arena, but it would be a simple matter to just drop in. All right. I'm going to pull out Archibald Sphere, start the timer, and do that. Drop in. Okay. You and I'm really worried. I'm scared the moment everyone's <laughs> Okay. You are oh, on boy. the map. <clears throat> so the, uh, the twins see you drop down, and like you can see like visible like eye rolls on both of them. I'm honestly less concerned with what they think and more concerned Ugh. with everybody else. Like, I'm worried the moment that people realize I've jumped down and realize who's jumped down, they're going to start jeering. Hey, big stupid, <laughs> go up with the audience, right? You're here to watch us succeed, not make another yeah. fool of yourself than you already have. Shut up, clown I won't clown say face. anything, I'm just going to roll out Archibald Sphere. You roll it out right as the minute timer finishes, and it articulates and creates itself into uh, Archie. The crowd kind of murmurs and says, Oh, oh, oh it kind of looks like the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> you see you see how, like, people... Repost. Pe- yeah. People are, uh, are kind of, like, sneering at, like, a little bit at the design, because it's, like, less beefy looking than the Mark 14. Mm-hmm. So they a lot. It, it appears that people are assuming that you stole the design elements from that one. Let's see, fix the wings. <laughs> Archie nods. 
and uh, its wings deploy out of its back. At this Does point, what? Does that win us any cr- out of the yeah, crowd? Yeah, I was going to say, the, the crowd like starts to like whisper and hum. There's a hum of excitement as people are like, what? Can it fly? It has wings. Why would it have wings? I told it don't fly. So they were speaking into like a microphone type device, correct? Uh, they're using uh, magic to enhance their voices, yeah. Oh, all right. <laughs> Darn. I wanted to... <laughs> I had a really obnoxious idea. I wanted to use, hijack their device. If only you had a bard that could cast such a spell on you. Well, yeah, sure. I would love to that if, if Sol would like to help. But I, I thought if they had a, a microphone, I was going to cast message into the mic and so that everyone would hear me, and I would just hijack their microphone. A microphone All right, I don't have an D&D. enhanced sound of any kind, but I can at least do Fascinate. So Sol <clears throat> jumps down. Uh, they look pissed. <laughs> All right, Soul jumps down, and you can go ahead and burn a charge of Inspire Courage or any of your Bardic Music charges and uh, amplify Levette's voice. I'll give you that one. All right, so um, we got an Inspire Courage and an Inspire Fascinate. We got some really awesome fucking, like, <laughs> inspiring background music happening currently. Yeah. All right, and Archie, I'm going to go ahead and drop him on the field. So his wings deploy, and he starts to, like, hover off the ground. And the crowd starts to fucking lose their mind. It's uh, it can fly. Think of the applications. The Think of the out. implications. Is this uh, is this on? Can everyone hear me? Your your voice like feedbacks a little bit and echoes throughout the whole uh, <laughs> arena. Um. So uh, I'm kind of surprised everyone's so invested in just convinced that the original design wouldn't even stay at an auction. But uh, so you have it. See, this one McKinley bought one. Uh, we call him Archibald. He does a, 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 a flourished bow while hovering, and people are like, ooh, ah. <laughs> I'm so proud of my boy. You hear the Colm has like a hushed whisper at you. He's like, Keebling, this is our spotlight. Get out of here. Soul turns and like still strumming their instrument just glares at them. Can I do percussion mm-hmm. for intimidation? Absolutely. Ooh, right. that's a 22. You attempt to intimidate 22, and it does not seem to phase Colm Omoris. What about the Chica? No, neither does Daria. it phase Daria Omoris. The two of them uh, realize now that you're just not just going to leave. So they're like, fine, fine. We'll challenge your stupid automaton to, a, to some sort of test, hmm? Well, I, well, I have exactly a sort of test in mind. It's a verbal, um, verbal test? Uh... Actually, Mal- Malchus, we might need your help with this unless someone can uh, produce yes. a little things on the man. Marcus hops down. All right, Marcus, so. you jump down into the pit with everyone else. Oh, how many more people are you going to bring? This well, is you- an exhibition show for our machine. As I was saying, you can build a very small machine, a very large machine, a very fast machine. Uh, at least relatively simple engineering. That is not terribly positive, all things considered, but uh, Archibald is unique in a different way. He can think, uh, maybe not this mountains at all the time, but he is learning, and he's learning very, very quickly. And I will prove this. We will see what your machine knows and what my machine knows. We don't care what the machines know. They're not supposed to know anything. They're automatons. They take orders and they they perform work you hear like murmurs of agreement in the audience so i have this thing called tamer's lash which kind of mm. makes like a loud whip cracking noise pretty much yeah uh-huh. with sonic energy yeah i wouldn't be aiming at anyone but could i put like aim it towards their feet just to get them to shut up um you could but it might be seen as a bit of more on the aggressive side and that might cause like the guards to take interest in this like right now this is just like you know a bit of a um impeding a public event um but you're not gonna face too much like this you're you're currently at the slap on a wrist level crime uh if you yeah. use a, an offensive spell to intimidate them that would be considered assault yeah, we are Fine. also committing a crime right now. So that's You are part. committing a minor crime right now. Wait, I can tell you that Archival's intelligence makes him capable of things so that no other machine could possibly do. No machine we can build can comfort someone 
Like he can? Well, he can. I so say, I say we challenge it to a duel. You would. Our robot <laughs> versus yours. Last one standing wins. Archibald uh, flies cool. over and lands next to you. Kneels down. Reaches oh, his... Can I t- turn what? off the voice? Can I turn off the loud voice? Yeah, you can hit it whenever you want. I, I can okay. stop whenever. Okay. Archibald oh, like, okay. lands next to you. Kneels down. Mm-hmm. Puts an arm... Uh, like, puts a hand on your shoulder. And like nods at you. You sure what's this? Are you okay with this? He nods again. And then takes out one finger and touches you above your heart again. I'll give him a hug. All right. I didn't really min-max my robot, but let's do this. <laughs> All right. So Archibald turns around and takes a step forward toward the uh, Obot Mark 14. The Obot Mark 14 turns and sort of takes in Archibald as a possible rival. And the two of them stare at each other across the arena as a hush falls across the entire place and a few grains of sand get blown in the wind and uh, someone whispers let them fight let them fight (laughs) alright so I'm going to go ahead and lock tokens and roll initiative where are the two gnomes they are going to be I don't actually have tokens for them since they're non-combatants but they were standing in the in the arena as well you're still in the stands I am Ah! (laughs) That's probably best for you. Was that a motherfucking JoJo reference? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> All right, initiative has been rolled, and tokens are locked. The Obot Mark 14 uh, has won initiative. Now, Soul, you're not really in combat necessarily, but you you have the highest initiative right now. Is there anything you want to do? I realize. Would they this... know if I was doing a bardic thing on them? Yeah. It would be apparent that you were uh, interfering. Man. Is, is it interfering if it's using the fact that uh, Archie has a kind of sentience? No, nope. I still have tongues going, so I'm hoping that if any sort of conversation happens between robots, I could at least hear it. You know, I, didn't, I don't know if they both so, talk to each other. So, I guess I'll wait. Uh, in that case, we're just going to jump ahead to the Obot Mark 14's turn. Calm and Daria are going to uh, order it to go and tear apart that heap of scrap. And uh, it's going to kind of like make a noise. What did he say? Me and Levette can understand him. uh, (laughs) He he essentially said, yes, master. Very very monotonous and very slowly. Uh, He's in the opposite. He's uh, good. Sol is just fascinatedly like nodding like... I can understand it, finally! <laughs> yes! So he is going to move up. Boom. It's, it's actually really... It's very mechanical. Like, I said he moves more fluidly than most automatons in society here, but he's very large, and his steps are very precise. Like, it's almost like he's stomping on his way over there. He's very heavy as well. Like, you can tell that the chassis is... I mean, actually, you know what? Levette, make me a knowledge engineering check, please. You got it. I can do that pretty well. <gasps> Whoa! Nat 20. Damn. Very nice, Nat 20. That is a 33. 33 knowledge engineering check. I'm going to tell you some things about this chassis that you noticed immediately when it started moving toward mm-hmm. Archie. One, it is over-engineered as fuck. They have slapped every bell and whistle they possibly could on this thing's skeleton to make it mm-hmm. look more intimidating than it actually is. You can tell on... Let's see, did, did you get a... Sh- yeah, I sent you a picture of what it looks like, a blown up one. It has these big pistons coming out of its back. You recognize it as, uh, as basically a supercharging system for the clockwork inside to like multiply the speed at which everything will move in there. And that's good for a system that's only going to run for a short time. Otherwise, it's going to create incredible amounts of heat otherwise and possibly cause damage to the system. Which leads you to believe that this is a sprinter, not a marathon runner. Right. I have a question. Yes. Uh, that uh, if this might answer it, I don't know. I don't know how to ask it because of how we reskin Levette. It kind of applies thematically into this. Basically, will he count as another idol on? <clears throat> uh, you don't know yet. No. Okay. I did. I was gonna wait to see if he had any tells, but when I rolled a nat twenty, I was like, well, let's see if I can just ask for it. No, he hasn't done anything that would tip you off that he's that he's mechanically an idol on. Okay. 
All right, so he's going to, to like, like I said, walk over there, and now he's going to attempt to make a slam attack against Archie. Oh, damn. <clears throat> okay, well, we're starting off good here. Uh, he rolled a nat oh, 20. No. <laughs> uh, he oh, no. does not, however, confirm the critical hit. So he's going to strike Archie for 11 points of damage. And that is his turn. All right, worse. so Calm is going to move up. Daria is going to move up. And they're going to continue taunting you. They're going to be standing next to each other. Man's posted. Like, ha! Ignore them. Look at your piece of shit robot. See? All those armor plates, all of that... What what is that? Scrimshaw work? I'm sure that's very (laughs) protective. You just think it does all the gates now. Let me just wait. Alright, and that's going to take us to Archie. Archie is up. What would you like him to do? Archie is up? Oh. I thought, he, yeah, I thought I went for him. Oh no! Oh, you're you're wanting to be involved? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. All right. all right, all right, all right. You're up. What do you want to do? I want to cast Mage Armor on him. Fair enough. All right. So I take a little <clears throat> vial from my pouch and I put it in one of the slots and f- unfills, and a bunch of plates come out from uh, like the weak spots in his armor and fold them up. Okay. Now, do you have a do you have the ability to do that on your Eidolon from beyond touch range? Yes. You have to share spells. Spells that are have a range of self or touch on myself, on him, okay. wherever he is. Cool. Oh, also, you can put uh, Vera next to Karis, like on the right side of Karis. Okay. If you want. I was used as a megaphone, so I had to drop down. Oh, augmenting the bots in the middle of the fight, are we? Fine. Daria's going to take uh, move up 10 feet and do something to the Obot Mark 14. The modular design is about to see a why does yours not improve it, Seth? Calm's gonna move up ten feet, and he's also going to do something to the Obot. Soul's just been, like, crossing their arms, so I can play music now, since they're doing stuff to their robot, right? Oh, yeah, sure. I don't see a problem. Cool. I mean, if, if the guards come and get us, they are going, going to do that. Uh, but don't Hard. stop the taxi <laughs> gnomes. The gnomes really, uh, really, really aren't supposed to be out here. <sighs> You, I saw, you knew that when you jumped down. Uh, I was just trying to help out you. Well, uh, Archie has initiative, and yeah, I, I'm not. I'm not sure how the crowd would take it if um, everyone else started assisting the fight. Well, I figured they probably music is something that people are just going to be like, "Oh, this is hype now." <laughs> like they won't. They they don't necessarily have to have a relation, but it's there to help Archie. Unless you're singing like, "Oh yeah, go Archie, win." I mean, that's kind of how Inspire Courage works. And uh, the bards are not a mystery in this world. No. Pe- people know what bards are and what bards do. I shall hold off, then. All right. Well, what is Archie doing? Uh, I haven't finished his beefy, so I'm going to stick with the regular punches for now. All right. Almost punched myself. <laughs> that would have not been a uh, very good answer. Uh, that is a 13 and a 28. Okay. Well, the 13 misses. The 28 definitely hits. Nice. All right. Well, we get him for oh. seven points, and then I'm also going to try and get him with the uh, double wings. Um, you know, it's only one worse to hit, so I'm going to go with the power attack. Okay. All right, that was a 17 and a 13. Both miss. All right. Um, also, the the seven damage you punch him for definitely mm-hmm. does not look like seven damage once it hits him. His armor plating seems to be absorbing some of that see. damage. Mm-hmm. I see. All right. So, is there anything you wanted to do, attempt to do, Soul? Uh, there's plenty of things I would love to do, but I am currently unable to within natural rules. Uh, man. Like what? Well, you know, help out Archie with friggin' inspire courage and stuff. Oh, like that? Yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah, the rules will allow it. It's just it would probably be frowned upon and probably get you into trouble. Not just me, I don't think. It would get no. you into a lot of trouble. I'm already in a lot of trouble. <laughs> We're trying to clear your name. I know. <laughs> so, honestly... Oh, hey, I'm going to lift up my uh, iPad and see if I can tell what they're doing to their robot currently. <laughs> Is it magical? Uh, they appear to be applying mechanical like work on the fly to it. Like they're mm-hmm. they're running up and they're they're slapping on a module here and they're removing a module there and they're just trying to keep this thing moving at peak speed 
It's like a pit crew for yeah, robots. Yeah, they're like a pit crew for robots, <clears throat> and they're and they're they're going while the robots are fighting. So, they they don't appear to be applying anything all that magical to it yet. Is there any way that I could use a uh, lore master to figure out what they're doing in order to like see a weak spot? Yeah, you could lore master that and apply it to like knowledge <laughs> engineering. Yes, please. That's a different series. This Let is, me find that weak spot. <laughs> this is this is check, please. This is a, this is a different series than that. Ah, uh, beauty right. fur. <laughs> no, no. All right, you use lore master, um, and you can you can tell what they're attempting to do is mitigate heat. Mitigate heat. Mitigate heat. They're trying to Let's remove and, and deal with the heat issues that are appearing on this thing. So they're well, they're like crying. Do that right now. So they're like crying <laughs> off uh, uh, burnt heat sinks and slapping on new ones. Okay, so I was gonna lean over to Levette. Is there any way that Archie can make it move so fast that it burns out? They're removing heat sinks and stuff, like a lot of them. It looks like it can burn out really fast if you make it work too much. I just yell, "Duck and weave, Archie!" <laughs> okay. Well, you can set uh, Archie to total defense next turn if you want. Oh right, I was gonna do that actually first round. But, uh, what does that do? Uh, it makes it to where you cannot attack, but you gain plus four AC. Plus an additional plus four? Holy feck. Yeah, but you're <laughs> unable to, you're unable to make any attacks. It won't protect me from another net 20. Because right now he's <laughs> Is there any way to make Archie faster? Well, I'm thinking he can fly. So, I might use that. Get him to fly away and get the guy to chase him around. I also have another trick up my sleeve. I want them to show their hand. I am so tense right now. Okay, so he goes to make a full attack. He uh, he pulls back all of his limbs. And when he goes to like strike with all of his arms, you can hear a sickening snap somewhere inside his chassis. His, uh, his shots go wide, and uh, Archie is fine. All right. Oh, I guess he's a piece of junk. Yeah, smack talk him. Say something witty, Levette. Something with you, Levette. Wow. Bravo. Boo. Oh, sorry. <laughs> is that, is that. Vera booing? <laughs> Boo. What, 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 what's he saying to say? I don't know. Okay. I figured you knew robot. That's extremely racist. Uh... You're not near us. Shut up. <laughs> Karis is sitting up in the, the stands, and she's screaming like, Yeah, Levette, kick its ass. All right, Levette, you're up. Uh, phase two, I'm going to now cast on Archibald Bull's strength. All right. He's got a plus four buff to his strength. Does various bees, um, do they die when they sting people? Uh, Are they those kind of bees? I mean, technically those, those kind of bees, but Hummel does not die when he's Can you send Hummel out to sting these fuckers? I mean, no one's going to know. It's a bee. <laughs> no, I, I'm not going to risk Hummel. Okay. Hummel's my little boy. So. <laughs> He's my boy. Yep. My boy. I feel the same way. My boy. Right. Right, stop it. All right. You drop right, a um, bull strength on Archie. Anything else? Um, That's all I can do for this turn. All right. Yeah, I'll come closer because I don't want to stand too close because uh, I do want Archie to feel supported. All right. But then that ends my turn. Yes. All right. Soul just kind of sits down next to Marcus and starts playing in the dirt. <laughs> All right, so uh, Daria is going to make a half step over and continue working on the Mark 14, uh, mostly heat mitigation stuff. She's going to hurl another insult at you, Levette, and then she's going to what? Hurl an insult at you. Oh, an insult. <laughs> Some probably something about your ears, Vera. Yeah, I'm used to it. I'm watching for now. Okay. All right, Colm's going to make a half step, and he is going to continue working on the Obot. Archie. So, with his strength higher, his attack bonus should be higher. Yeah, I it believe. will be. Hey, Beardy. Yes. Would the crowd start noticing they're working so hard to keep this thing working? Uh, probably, yeah. It's probably not a good look, but winning the fight would go a long way, so. All right, Archibald makes a full attack uh, with his dual power punch, and the 19 will hit. So he oh, does hit. Guys. Yeah, so he does hit one of those. It looks like oh, twenty-two to twenty for his wing attacks, though. Yeah. So his wings hit 
They're the fist set? Both wings, yeah. So give him two wing damages and one power punch damage. Okay. Power punch. <laughs> oh. It's plus ten, though. So that was twelve minus whatever he's reducing. Yeah, to. snake eyes. Great. <laughs> oh. Um, and then two of the wings. That is an additional fourteen. Potentially. Two, two, two. <laughs> two, two, two. Way to go, Archie. All right. <clears throat> to be fair, that's a shitload of damage. <laughs> yeah, I mean, when Archie hits, he hits good normally. It's just right. if he hits. Beginning of round three, anything from you, Soul? I mean... Soul is starting to draw tree frogs in the dirt. <laughs> <laughs> good job. They're, they're tree frogs from my village. Hey, everyone loves those tree frogs. I love those tree frogs. Me as a person hates frogs, though. Man. Because of a dream. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Obot is going to swing at you, and his attacks are going to miss. What the piece of shit? Lovette. Phase three is to cast Lesser Evolution Surge on him, mm-hmm. and I'm going to give him an ability score increase evolution to increase his strength by another two. Another two? All right. You use your uh, evolution surge to give a plus two strength bonus to Archibald. Mm-hmm. And that is your turn. So Archie hasn't spoken at all during this fight? Archie hasn't said anything, no. There. Should he have? I don't know. Just Soul is really excited to finally like, understand tongues. him. Because they use tongues. And they're like, well, this robot battle is a lot more less talkative than I thought it would be. I'm going to draw frogs in the dirt. <laughs> <laughs> You're not impressed by the giant robots fighting? Like, eh. Soul is completely like thinking that Archie's gonna win because they saw what the two who small kids were doing and shit. They're like, eh, Archie's got this. Oh yeah, I haven't been narrating all his buffs because uh, <clears> once I like when I give him the bull strength, all of his he's got like the like kind of skeleton arms and they reinforce with more muscular like chassis. Uh, and then when I did the the other enhancement, then I did the same on his legs and really beefed them up. Turn then, you said? Yeah, it's Archie's turn. Cool. I'm going to go ahead and do a power punch. All right, that was a 15 and a 28. All right, the 28 hits. Ooh, yeah. That was plenty of damage. And then let's do the wing attacks. Oof, that was a 17 and a 12. Both miss. Okay. All right, the Obot is going to make another slam at you, and his drill catches Archie a little bit and puts a nice big gash in him. Ooh, it's okay, I'll do it. It'll be okay. All right. Next time, one, I'm going to use, uh, well, after that hit, maybe I should reinforce him. And these guys haven't been doing anything magical to... That's not, how, en- that's not how engineering works. Well, how does it work with me? Well, you're a summoner, so you function differently than these guys. Okay, well, that's what I was wondering. They actually, they actually built something. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. Sorry. That was a low blow from the DM. <laughs> um, but I'm going to then Magic Fang on him. All right. I will go ahead and apply that. There you go. Now, Magic Fang is only supposed to affect one attack, but so... Yes, so it's affecting his fists. Right, so it means that if his <clears throat> wings hit, we're going to have to subtract damage from them. All right, existed Daria. Okay, they are going to continue working on the robot the same as they have been in the previous rounds. They're going to hurl another insult at you. Make a perception check, please. Just live at it. Okay, you don't detect... What about Archibald the Pookie? No, you don't notice anything out of the ordinary. Okay, that's going to take us on to Archie. Baby, clutch these guys. All right, let's power punch him again. Oh, that was a natural one. Yeah, go ahead and make a confirmation roll, please. That's going to confirm. Yeah. All right, so Archie critically misses. All right. All right. It looks to be that your main attack is the one that critically missed, and that is Mm -hmm. actually going to end your turn. So your second attack is actually going to be negated, which sucks. Also, the critical fail effect is called overextend. You provoke an attack of opportunity from all adjacent enemies. So it means he gets a free swing at you. So here's his free swing. It's going to miss. All right. It's going to take us to the top of round five. It's me. <laughs> Hit me. All right. The Obot Mark 14 is going to make a full <clears throat> attack. All right. Looks like only one of those are going to hit. Seven points of damage to Archie. 
Mm. Well, that. All right, one more evolution surge on him. Okay. I'm going to give him the natural armor one again, so he has another plus two bonus. And I get to save my last third level spell, second level, my good spell, my last good spell. I get to save it. After all, it looks like my ace won't come into play. All right. You drop an AC evolution surge onto Archie, giving him plus two to his armor class. Mm Mm-hmm. Any move action? I, I, like, rub his shoulders. (laughs) I'm like, come on, this is funny. All righty. The Amorises continue working on their machine, and it is now Archie's turn. All right. Archibald, this is the money shot. Double punch. All right. Your 28 is going to hit. The 14 will miss. All right. You strike him. His armor absorbs some of the damage, but you can tell he's now heavily wounded. All right. And then the wings get a 23 and a 22. Okay, so the wings are going to hit. Now remember to subtract one damage from each of these attacks, please. Oh, okay. Come on. There we are. Cool. All right. That is a total of 12. Right. You can tell his armor is resisting quite a bit of that. All right. It's going to take us to the beginning of round six. How's everybody else doing? It's not the best frog drawing, but I mean, I'm proud of it. Is it is it more of like a, a sit on a lily pad, or is it more of like a climb a tree? Is a climb a tree frog. He's a real jumper. You can tell. Yeah, he's uh, kind of fatter I than I intended, and he like the tree frogs are supposed to be skinny, but I, I accidentally made it fat because like I tried to like overcorrect since it's dirt. See, so now I just have a fat tree frog that I'm drawing. See, Marcus is more used to toads. We're, we're more of like pond kind of people. They're, they're more half like Marcus and Sol are just talking about the frog drawing. Vera has a like, popcorn bucket, up. but it's filled with good beetles. They keep on trying to get out, so she has to keep on killing them off the edge, keep them inside the bucket. <laughs> she, does she offer them to Karis? I, I do offer one to Kara. Karis will eat one. Yeah. Yay. Do, they have, like, do, they, do they have like popcorn? Like a popcorn vendor or something? We're like, kind of stuck. In, <laughs> we're kind of stuck inside the arena currently. I don't anyone's gonna um, feed us have you never been to a to to any any sort of or seen any sort of like sporting event those people toss that kind of stuff. they toss it to you uh i'm sure they'd love to toss things at us currently <laughs> since we're kind of being illegal us <laughs> kind of being illegal yeah this is the frog i'm drawing oh. <laughs> all right uh the obot mark 14 whiffs both of its attacks Nice. Uh, yeah! Make another perception check. Alrighty, 18. You Sorry. can very clearly see <clears throat> heat lines, uh, a heat rippling off the back of this mm-hmm. obot. It's becoming very apparent that it's overheating. Is and... it kind of like when a hot car in like a parking lot where you can kind of see the like wobbly looking except, air above it? Except it's a lot of wobbly looking air. It's not a little bit. It's like, because like a parked uh. car will have like a, maybe a, a centimeter or two of wobbly air. This is a lot. It's definitely giving off an incredible amount of heat as these pistons are, like, supercharging its systems. Yeah. So you can tell that it's becoming hard. Uh, it's not only that, but it's also becoming hard to work on. You can see the Omorises have, like, leather gloves on, and mm-hmm. even those, you can see that there's burn marks on their gloves now. <laughs> What's wrong with, with your machine? Well, I thought it was uh, the future of engineering. It will be once it puts yours in the ground. Well, when is that going to happen? It doesn't look like that's going to be the day. All right. So you're going to actually take any action or just taunt? Um, I'm going to <laughs> hop, step behind him, and I'm going to pull out my own tools, kind of casually fix him up, casting uh, Rejuvenate Lester or Rejuvenate Adelon. So not only are you using your magic to buff your tar- your pet, you're going to heal your pet, too. Well, I mean, are, is that not what they're doing? Disgusting. <laughs> I mean, I feel like you're kind of just lowering the, yourself to, like, them. Well, fine. Their All standards. Right. That's just how I see it. I'd well, be like... But how... Like, I thought... Well, I guess you're... No, that's actually a good point. I do want to show off what he can do without being fixed on in the field. But I'm out of things to do. Um, I mean, I can... Possibility I'm, is also not doing something. No, you can, you can, uh, you can heal your idol on if you want. That's fine. Um... <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm not worried about it either way, honestly, because uh, uh, it's going to come into play either way. Well, yeah, I don't know. I'll just end my turn, I guess. Alrighty. 
crunch, crunch, crunch on them beetles, yo. Ew. I thought they were dead when you made them into good beetles. Not oh, that no. they were still alive. Oh no, they still kind no, of they're... wiggle around and everything. Uh, they can't, that makes them even worse. They can't move much though because they're bulkier. Yeah, it fattens them up so they're like their little legs can't lift them anymore. Ooh. All right, that is a twenty-two and a twenty-eight. Both attacks hit. Oh uh, yeah. Does he this... still have wing attacks, or is that not a thing for this? He one? does. I'm resol- I'll resolve that in a second. Or if I could should roll him now, I'd do that. All right, hold on. Uh, it's unnecessary. Okay. I thought so as much. All right. So with the last two blows that Archie rings out, uh, you can see one of the like the the large reservoir like container on the back of Obot Mark fourteen that contains all the supercharging units. It splits open, mm-hmm. creating a bit of an explosion. I knew it. <laughs> a bit. A bit. I had a feeling that was going to happen, but I was prepared for it. <laughs> oh. Maybe more of an explosion than I thought, though. A bit of an I explosion. love that we did okay. not well, move anywhere. whatsoever. <laughs> okay, I'm going to need a reflex save from Levette and from Archie, please. That sounds good to me. So just for, like, the podcast, like, that radius zone is, like, centered around that Obot, but, like, me and Marcus, no, Russell just and Marcus, right are outside right, of or, right outside of it, just because we've been sitting and Seems drawing in the 20. dirt. Yeah, <laughs> you're right outside the explosion range, and, uh... All right, Archie is going to uh, take the brunt of this, and in fact, mm-hmm. he's going to kind of, like, you can tell he does the following. What did he say? It would roughly translate to, stay back, friend, I'll protect you. Aww. And he, he, like, he backs up a little bit and, like, holds his arms out to, like, shield you from the blast. <laughs> well, that's I, if it takes him uh, past his threshold, I'm going to burn whatever extra damage he takes on my lifelink. Okay. All right. In that case, let me roll some damage here. All righty. And you want to just enough to keep him alive? Uh, the way it works is that it basically keeps you at one. Keeps you at one. Okay. Uh, yeah, I can't. I can't use it to keep him above that. But if it would take him down below one, I can spend any number of points to keep him at one. Okay. Yeah, unless I die. Then we'll both be dead. Okay. Well, he takes all of his HP but one, and the bleed over will affect you, and you'll take 12 damage. Okay. All right. You also take half damage from the blast. Oof. There you go. All right. So you're up to 27 damage yourself, and Archibald's at one HP. The explosion is a 20-foot burst, so it also affects the Omorises, and they did not fare quite so well as you did. Um, they're both. They're both. Are they dead? They're both thrown backwards, and yeah. uh, they have taken they significant <laughs> damage. It's unknown whether they like if they died or not. Uh, but the other, like they had a, like I mentioned before, they had a lot of Obot Mark Sevens standing around. Uh, there's also attendants and employees, people in like Omoris Industries clothes, uh, rush onto the field and drag them off before they, anyone has a chance to do anything about it. Okay. Gnarly. All right. <laughs> I'm just going to hug Archie as tight as my little arms can let, can t- hug him. All right. There's, like, just shock from the audience. People are, like, freaking out that you are that you and Archie are still standing. It's full of clapping. <laughs> Karis is, like, jumping up and down. Marcus is whooping Whooping as uh, as loud as he can, and big 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 old suck it to the air. Uh, to I kind of want to run over, be like right in the face, <laughs> and like suck it, but I won't. Sol runs over, and they check on Levette, and they're like, "Hey, you okay?" I look up to you with some tears just in the corners of my eyes, and I'm but I'm just still hugging on Arch. I'm so I love this boy so much. Do you want to make a big speech to the crowd we're currently in to? Oh, change geez. the tides even more? I don't... I, I wasn't even thinking about that. I just wanted to make sure he was okay, but so... Why don't you let them know that you think they sabotaged your past experience, maybe? I mean, show tell them about this craftsmanship. Like, it's shoddy as fuck. I can give you the amplification needed to tell them this, but yes. are you ready? Oh, I suppose I should say something. Actually, I'm going to look around the crowd and see if I see my parents anywhere. Oh, uh, yeah, they're in the crowd. 
uh, I don't know, I kind of look at them with like an expression of like, help please, I don't know what to do from here. Uh, in that case, Seamus can hop into the arena and uh, address the assembled crowd and talk about the, you know, the, the quality craftsmanship and time-honored traditions of the Zeniris Bodwin family. I'll cast a Fascinate to amplify him. So, uh, yeah, he, he goes on and delivers a speech to the assembled crowd, and you can tell that this is going to have a pretty major impact on the family fortunes. Both positive for you guys and negative for the Amorises. Where exactly are the Amorises? Uh, they've been drug away. Aw, I was gonna walk over to them and actually give them a nudge, like, you want some heat? No, they're, they're no both, they had attendance. Yeah, they took them yeah, away yeah, right away. They wouldn't be able to say yes or no, currently. Oh. I, if they didn't answer, I would have leaned over closely again. You got knocked the fuck out! It's a bit fucked up. And then his hunger went, mm. I mean, that's, that's, <laughs> that's a bit fucked up. Like, <laughs> just, just so you know that. They might be dead. <laughs> I mean, they're fucked up too, though. But <laughs> I mean, I targeted those pe- the Archie and uh, Levette. Did those go through? Yeah. Okay. Archie was at like one HP, so it wouldn't have done very much for him, unfortunately. Though. Oh. He, he very low, 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 low. That's gonna heal everyone else for fourteen, and then Soul's gonna finish their wounds. He can so. Those what are my joke wounds. <laughs> what, are, what are we healing her from? Uh, what do you get indigestion from the beef? They were delicious, full of protein, nutritious, <laughs> a lot of protein. <laughs> All right. So after Seamus finishes his speech, there's like applause and cheering from the crowds, and you know they realize that the the event, the the big spectacle's done. So the arena yes. empties. How do we yeah, get probably. out of here? <laughs> Vera will wave. Come, come on. Is it low enough where I can? Yeah, put my can, hand down. Yeah, you can reach an arm right. down. <laughs> oh. I got right. a twelve climb. With the assist, oh, gonna... yeah, with the assist with the from assist. Vera, that's enough. Yay! I was also right. almost hoping for the skittering, like <laughs> <laughs> trying to get up. Whoop. Oh, Marcus! Do, do you make it to my hand? He's so <laughs> short too. Because <laughs> <laughs> if I grab you, I'm just gonna like yank you up. <laughs> oh. Yeah, we got him. Like a fish. <laughs> hey, Lovette. Or, let Archie, come on. I'm giving Archie another hug when you guys call us over. We got a piece out of here, yo. I don't think we, we can lift Archie up. No, that's... Uh, yes, we can. I don't I'm think going. he needs it. No, I'm going to... He can fly. Him, oh, that's get him right. Get him in front of me and be like... I'm going to uh, get you something special for this soon, okay? Hookerbot 9000. What? <laughs> uh, fold him up into his orb, put him in my coat pocket, and come over to everybody else and be like, oh, okay. Um, All right. I hold down my hand. Soul reaches down, too. You're good. All right, so we're going to pull the map back to Whaler Cog. But uh, we did not get a confession. That's true, you did not get a confession. And then I don't really know how we are going to solve it. What is it, seven year climb without a direct confession? And I don't really know how we are going to get confession without eating some. Although, to be honest, I feel like gnomes would be totally cool with leading the witness, just given how they do everything else. Mm. Not that it would be an actual idea that I should ever say, but technically, <laughs> if Marcus ate one of them, Oh. And then use their body to tell them that they... That would work. <laughs> um, it would work. Actually, though, and you know that is not so. necessary. That is not necessary. I have things like, you know, Zone of Truth. I have things <gasps> like that. Wait, I mean, they're like, not like, the table, so... Maybe dead. Yeah, we go to the... We, we go find out where they're at. No, I was not saying this in character, because that would be terrible to say around here. I just want you guys to and know if that. If they are dead, if they are dead, we just, you know, ask... Um, we ask her, her to, you know, reanimate. and. If, I mean, are that. you guys... You're having this conversation, right? <clears throat> I I Caris wasn't. Will, Caris will peep up, if you're, if you're really talking about this. Okay. Kenny was not. All right. I... <laughs> I mean, okay, hold oh, on, no. I mean, uh, this is so... Okay. Is Marcus going to say something? Marcus, please don't. 
you're gonna have to start saying Marcus, please don't a lot more often. Actually, it's garbage. Please don't give a fuck Question anymore. Mark. Oh no, that's not good. No, if you, if you, oh boy, if you make LAC. You know, I could technically, if they ever wake up again, do suggestion and suggest them to confess to their crimes. Technically, well, that does mean that we wouldn't be able to go back to Moila. Should we just check on the weirdo Sorry. gross twins or something? <laughs> Where did they go? Their caretaker people took them away, I'm guessing, to a hospital. Are there hospitals here? Uh, <laughs> they, they, they probably, probably have a family. Yeah, and, they're a big uh, family. They probably have people on staff for that. In fact, they probably have family on staff or something. Wait a minute. Yeah. I could use invisibility and sneak in there and see if they can best in some way, but... That's not really getting a confession. Um, so, are things like truth spells pretty common knowledge? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Why don't we just use the truth spell to verify that I'm not lying to... Because I trust you? To Moira's muscle. Uh, She doesn't want to talk to you. That's true. Yeah. Thank you, Archie. (laughs) So... You Aren't have, you uh, in your pocket, I thought? Yeah, you have is, basically, at this point, you guys have pretty much restored Lavette's family to not, like, where it used to be, but at least to a survivable economic state. Mm-hmm. Like, it, it will survive, and the Amorises have been dealt a, a pretty terrible blow today. All in all, I think it's a success. I believe it is. I have... <laughs> I have been... Being myself over the long things this whole time. That is, uh, that's going to take some getting used to. Well, now your family seems okay. That's good. Yeah. Um, for the most part, financially, well, okay. I suppose I would need to absorb those investments in Bill after all, but I do think I could maybe, maybe this smog is a bit much, but I feel like. The machines we build here uh, the world and, and uh, all the other nations turn a blind eye to them. But uh, I suppose if we can't on the races and get a confession from them, I'd like to at least visit home again and speak with my parents. Let's do that then. Um, what is our schedule for leaving here? Well, when we get on a boat to leave, oh, we my carriage there. and horses will be there. I'm pretty oh. sure the harpies have already left, right? Don't they stick around for like a day? I thought well, they gave us two only... days. Well, that was for the Mary Valley. They only said they were, were going to take us here. Yeah, they, we oh. didn't have a return. Yeah, we oh, didn't right. have a yeah, return. We didn't know how long we we're going to be here. Yeah. Yes, I so, yeah. so they're probably already gone. Ooh, the caravan the set old, up there the in the trade district, so you guys could pop down there and find out. It's, oh boy, um, it's about what? Uh, da, da, da. Yeah, we'll we'll say it's about three p.m. currently. Soul's ears go down a little. Uh... Oh, they are still there. You don't know. Do you want to head that oh, way? Oh, okay. Not? Sorry, I didn't. I didn't uh... As far as I know, you guys are still at the arena. Oh, okay. I figured we were walking on our way back. Well, uh, the things that I wanted to take care of could happen anywhere. Actually, I wanted to get something for Archie because he did such a good job. Uh, something I think would mean a lot to him. Are there like pet breeders? Around Whaley Kong. Pet breeders? Yeah. Yeah, like exotic animal dealers and shit like that? Not even necessarily exotic, just yield pet store. There's like animal dealers, yeah. Would I know of any place like that? Sure, Trade District would have something. Okay, well, we'll go somewhere like that. Okay. And I. Is, are, is the rest of the party coming along? I don't see why we wouldn't. We don't really know yeah. the area, so. That's true. Okay. I was going to get Archibald a puppy. Thank God. I thought you were going to get him a bird. I was going to be no. upset. <laughs> no, I was going to get him a puppy. We already have a skeleton bird anyways. Or a kitten. I'm going to keep my mouth shut. Do animals <laughs> have That's a good idea. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, good. I don't even know what that could have inferred, but I don't think I want to. La- last uh, <laughs> session? <laughs> oh, that? <laughs> I mean, you know, yeah, probably a puppy then. Um, I don't know. Just like, what what do we got? Do they just have like? Because I mean, like, 
I wouldn't be surprised if pets are not a very common, like, popular commodity around here. They aren't. Um, they and, really aren't. And I wouldn't, wouldn't be surprised if they're, like, really sickly. So if they're, like, not really many animals or nothing that, like, looks like it's going to... I mean, they're not, they're not really a popular commodity because most wait. high society designer pets and, like, high fashion sort of pets are actually clockwork. So Yeah. So they essentially have, like, the clockwork owl from... Well, I'll Washington. wait on that then until we get somewhere else. Yeah, Boo- uh, Boo-bo. Oh, okay. Yeah, you guys yeah, have wandered down into the trade district to go mm-hmm. to a pet store, and then you decided not yes. to. So you're currently down in the trade district Back central it. square. So should right. we oh. see if the harpies are there? Did we see the harpies there? They are there. They're oh, no. uh, they're they're barking to the crowd and they're selling things and buying things and they're in their element right now. Soul looks embarrassed. Lavette well, is trying to hide that she's a, a little disappointed they're still there. Uh so when when should we head back to Hartenshin anyway? When would find love when they're leaving, I guess. Uh, in fact, Who wants to go talk to them? <laughs> I'll already start doing that. Soul's kind of following, but they're like kind of rubbing their hands nervously. Are you okay? I feel weird. Oh god. Oh god. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Why do you feel weird? <laughs> Alright, so they notice your group, and uh, Zaris is going to fly down. Oh boy. Hi, Zaris. Hello. How has your trip been? <sighs> it's been a lot. As profitable as ours, I hope. Oh. Ooh, uh, he makes a little profit. profit here? Yes, a little profit. In fact, when were you scheduled to depart? Well, we've nearly loaded up as much of the local goods as we can carry, and we've sold quite a bit of our dwarven goods we brought from the Iron Mountains. So, probably tomorrow. Where are y'all headed from here? Well, from here, we were going to travel. She uh, produces a map. Okay, so she said that they were in the Iron Mountains, the Dwarven area. They oh. then went north to the Elven Lands. They then went northeast to Ville. They were then on their way south to the Gnome Lands, where they met you guys. That's when they diverted over to the Merry Valley, and then they went to the Gnome Lands again. Now, their next trip, their next step on the plan was to take these Gnomish goods back to the Dwarven Lands to the west. And that's there... sort of their trade route, is they do dwarves to elves to oh, humans okay. to gnomes back to dwarves. We don't have any reason to go to the dwarves yet, do we? No, we really should go to back to elves. <laughs> so we don't necessarily want to go with them, then? Probably not, and I already contracted them to get our carriage ready for us. Stuff, so That's true. So, well, you, did, you bought it back from them, which they'll send word to have that prepared and, and ready for you. Um, so it has, like, a bashful, like, wave to, like, each one of them. How much did it they, cost you they to, They take uh... little notice of you. Awesome. <laughs> Good. How much did it cost you to get see the carriage back? I can speed some of it, I feel, uh, especially if we delay. You know, um, uh, I didn't pay for it. Wait, what? Did we steal it? No, we can't steal it. Let's you know, we could always talk about it uh, later. Yeah, can we? <laughs> or, or maybe never. <laughs> talk, talk about what? If we stole it, no, we can't talk about it later. If we stole it, you know what I know about this area? There's a hot springs. Let's do that tonight. Huh? Huh? Uh, well, been like come on, Vera. No. As always, special thanks to Protagonist for the theme music, and Emily Roll for Fantasy for this episode soundtrack. Please leave a like or subscribe if you want to see more content like this. And leave a comment if you have any suggestions. Until next time, bye!